This man's art and film, it screams dedication and passion. I mean, that's what you feel. And knowing the man personally, I've seen him travel from the other side of the planet to come to New York, to build in the Bronx with the legends, to build in Brooklyn with the legends, to get the story, to travel to Queens and spend nights on the floor and film for 12 hours a day. And it's, it was, it's an amazing passion. It's all about the art with print. You know, it's, it's about conveying the story properly. The dedication is there. You can see it in the way that he just carries himself. He's willing to help you on your film while he's working on his film. You know, any which way that he can help you out, he will. It's not a problem for him. And this is why people are so willing to help him out. Just make sure that his dream comes true because he's been working on this for as long as I've known it. I've known it for six years. When I was, I met him working on my film and he helped me out. So yeah, man, this guy is just, he's destined for greatness. It's like you're going for something. You're very, fo you're very focused in what you want to do. You see opportunity where other people don't. Working day and night in a factory, coming in, having t-shirts to try and do a little hustle, work, make a bit of money, all to plow into this film. You're always working, always, always working. You, you need to chill out, mate. <laughs> That's what I'd say. Yeah. Well, he got his job to do, so let him do his job. He always been working hard, doing work in the factory, and he was doing work at his home all the time. I never stop anybody. I just told him to do little, not too much work, you know, don't overdo. But it's like you're a crackhead, <laughs> but for work. <laughs> like, you, you, you'll see something and you're working on that straight away. Like, you, you've always got an idea, you're always sort of pushing, you're always working. Just to remember the fresh-faced kid at Fresh 97 who was super excited to be there and really just wanted to meet the Artful Dodger and experience what was happening. To see where you've grown to now, that's an amazing journey. And I look at my journey and think, well, we're, we're both travelling like parallel and we keep crossing paths along the way, but I never really clocked what you were doing. And now I've seen what you've achieved, it's like unbelievable. You know, and you've definitely got the respect of a lot of big named players in the game. So, and you know, and you've done everything off your own back. You've put your money where your mouth is. No, no prick for all these years and funded everything for himself, for himself, from a factory, a factory lad done good through grit, determination, and just pure skill, really. He's turned out to be a real good guy, fabulous filmmaker, and he just needs a break, like we all do. And that's all we all need, is one break, one person to stand up for us, to support us, and we've done that as much as we could every step of the way. It's easy for me to, I get distracted, whereas you'll get an idea and you'll work that idea and that's your idea, that. And then you'll work that and work that and work that. And then you might get to a point where you hit a bit of a wall with it. But then you've got another idea. To have that level of intensity and commitment and I'm gonna get this done and make that last for all those years while you're actually holding down a full-time job working 12-hour shifts in a factory, it's... That's a pretty big deal, mate. That's a pretty big deal. I don't know anybody else who could do it. I couldn't do it. I know a lot of things I wanted to achieve. I just gave up. I stopped doing some of the things I wanted to do. He won't rest until he has done it. So father and son, they are both the same. He doesn't care about the sleep. He doesn't care about the food. It, uh, that's worrying me. It's not that we, do, we don't want to help him, we don't, but the way the things were at this time when he started music. We both lost our jobs and uh, 
Chris's dad was ill at work. He was at a bad time. He lost his eyesight. And it was a bad time. When, since then we've been covering, but Chris never asked for the money. He's always working, trying to work himself. He paid from his own pocket. He got all his cameras, uh, bought his own camera. Uh, he makes his own film. Don't forget, it costs money. Everything costs money. But he's doing hard work for himself. Whatever he owns, he wants to do himself. But there is no help from, uh, from the government or the, from anybody. I can't help much. Uh, we got to look after our own self. But I do whatever they want. We can help whatever we can. I've known Pritz for probably more than 10 years. And but at some point I um, I've been moved to his department and although I wasn't part of the team he kept coming back to me and I was I remember thinking back then what's up with this guy why all the questions um, uh, he got to know me he knew I was into photography uh, but I, I was thinking so what who cares and uh, turns out Preet does not quite as cool then, but yeah. The inside of this car has definitely been left to the elements. I'm more now, concerned with this. We're gonna examine the car hasn't been on the road in his element. Years. He's been running around all day in the streets of New York. What we've got here is mechanical. You see what he's at night now, right? In the Jazzy J Lair. We got, got the spell on it. We're gonna do a paint job, right? He said his mom bought this car many <laughs> this years what he does. He believes it's all original. Work so hard all day. Come home. Instead of going to bed, that's where he ends up. Alan does a great job at bringing these back, and it'll save Gary thousands of dollars if we restore the paint. Painting this Mercedes means we have to strip it down 100% and then put it all back together. Big difference in price. What I need you to do is an inspection. I need all the critical systems in the car looked at. I know his friends. I met Jesse here. But they are so good friends, they don't let, when he goes to, Prith goes to uh, America, he, or they always let him stay in the, at their place. They don't let him go to the hotels or anywhere. They always look after him. Oh, his friends are always helping in uh, New York, going to places, helping him with his uh, job, pictures. Uh, his editing and uh, all. He learns from them. I've known this dude for so many years. Two continents we done hung out on. His hometown, London, and mine, Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Been chasing you crazy ass rappers and producers for a long time trying to finish this project. Hopefully our niggas know to work with him because he's a hard working brother and very talented. Don't fuck around. I've seen this guy with, oh, I remember, <laughs> I remember when he started with VHS. <laughs> He's finally stepped his game up though. He's, 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 he's working with the digital, 1080 and better, you know what I'm saying? You have an idea in your head, you can see the cogs going, you can see you thinking about, you, you know what you want when you're there. You see, he's working constantly. Um, there are 10 projects he's working on. He's constantly in that uh, creative mode. Um, at work, I would sit at my desk, and with the corner of my eye, I would see someone walking back and forth. I would turn around and it would be Prit in his tiger mode. Uh, so I was like, always laughing in his tiger mode. Something was brewing, some idea, and he would be going back and forth and uh, eventually come over and say, I've got a great project in mind. I take inspiration from the environment that I'm in, whereas, like, you're like a creative thinker you, you get your idea first you get your inspiration first before you start and then you work towards making that into a goal you, you can see that you, you're working it through and I, I love watching people like creative people not just creative people I like watching people do their thing Right there, I'm like Prit, go to sleep, man. Lay down, stretch out. Oh yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm gonna do it in a minute. I come back down. <laughs> He's sleeping with the with the camera in one hand 
his phone in the other hand, and his computer right in front of me. I was like, oh, okay. Dude, why do you think I couldn't let him come home by himself the other day? Yo, dude, I had to take the computer. I was like, all right, let me not wake him up. I put the computer over here. I took the camera and put it up. But the phone, he had grip on the yeah, phone. So I, said, so I said, all right, you know what? I'll let him sleep with the damn phone. You know, he's <laughs> live with that. Mm -hmm. When Pritt stayed at my place in London numerous times, I mean, literally, I've, I've said, look, go and lie on the bed, the blow up bed, make you something on the floor, sleep on it. And I've come back in to check on him two minutes later, and he's passed out, sitting upright, neck all crook on the armchair. And I'm like, well, um, I wake up in the morning expecting to see him like 8 a.m., you know, bon voyage, he's long gone. <laughs> He'd give me a call and be like, you know, I had to go and do uh, some bits while I'm down here in London, Jay. You know? I'm like, definitely cool. Success is not a destination. It's a journey. They get comfortable and they forget their way. They lose their way. And they don't understand to keep going. Success is not, it doesn't, it has a date, there's no date on it. But your light has an expiration date on it. And when that day comes and you didn't put in that work and get what you need to get out of it, the light's going to somebody else. And you'll just be a has-been. I see a lot of older cats who I look up to. And I wonder, how did that fire burn out inside of you? You know, it's like your birthday comes every year, once every year. But when you die, the birthday stops. The work that you put in is what makes your legacy that lasts forever. His filmmaking skills have grown and grown and grown. It's um, it's stunning, and he's, he's doing like record label. He's, he's got a record label putting records out, but it's all trying to fund this film and get get a get a break. And say he's had no help, and he certainly needs that break. And say that some of the artwork and stuff that we've done from him over the years. The posters for the, the the film, and he's going to be a star. He's going to be a top top uh, filmmaker one day. So I'm going to sign that. That and this is going to be uh, worth some money one day because uh, Pretty is a he's a fantastic filmmaker. He just need, needs that break, and when he gets it, he's going to smash it. So you spoke about it before. The we've spoke about it before, and other people have said it to you, like. You're looking for this story outside of yourself, but like you're the story. So like when I come to photograph, I'm not photographing the people at the pressing plant doing their job, like when, when we're at the pressing plant. I'm not photographing the other people, I'm photographing you doing what you do. The part, the part that's missing is your story. The part that's interesting to people is your story, is what you're doing, why you're doing it, the motivations that you've got for doing it. So I think that's important because the thing is, is like when you look at it, in any creative endeavour, if you do it truly and completely, any, any creative endeavour, you put yourself into it. It's just, it's part of what it is. People like that, so they believe in what they do. They promote it, they push it, and they make documentaries and films like this to inspire people and influence people. And you can't, knock that can you? Everything that I've worked towards or whatever I've done in the past as a kid to now, everything's in that film. Everything that re you know represents me or who I am, you'll see it in that film. So we worked shifts and Pritz uh, Prit, <laughs> Prit worked three shifts and we would come in at two o'clock and for me that would be start of the day. But Prit would come in and tell me that he was uh, on the phone with New York. He was uh, he edited some film. He done some music uh, for another record. And I'm like, I'm just starting the day. And so he's non-stop, 24 hours. Um, I know I can text him at any time. He will be up, editing, uh, talking to New York, London, whatever. Um, he doesn't sleep. I don't think. What a lot of people don't realise is the amount of effort when you're working on projects and you've also got a nine to five. The you know the the amount of character and the amount of you know oomph you've got to do to basically work 
your, your job and then work another job you know it's bad enough when you you know you're working in an office but you know when you're like Prit you're working in a factory on free shift so it's it's just you know extra levels you know it's just it's just a lot of dedication and a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes um, and you know before we went to New York in, in 2013 there was a lot of planning to do uh, we would initially spend a lot of time on the phone just uh, trying to work out where we would be going what we would be doing who we would be doing it with and there'd be a lot of backwards and forwards a lot of um, a lot of long phone calls as I say and um, that was sort of after hours late at night a uh, little bit nearer towards the um, towards the trip coming up uh, at the weekends, Prit would start coming coming down to London. He sort of drive down every weekend, uh, and we'd sort of meet up in West London, sort of like uh, where his family's based, uh, as he's sort of London based, as it were. Sometimes we'd be over here in South London, and you know we would we would take it from there. We're just planning really. There's a lot of stuff going on, coordinating with different people, uh, different time zones, and. One of the things that actually sort of really is a, 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 a sort of indicator of, of Pritt's character is that sadly, during this early stage, uh, uh, planning beforehand, when I say early, I mean just you know before the trip, uh, his uncle uh, became uh, very unwell uh, and he was admitted to um, Charing Cross Hospital, which is over in, in West London, sort of Hammersmith Way. Um, and some of the times, you know, at the crucial times leading up there, uh, we'd actually, we'd actually been working uh, and, on planning stuff and, and, and logistics and talking to people and making our stuff. We, we'd actually be working in the hospital. You know, we'd be we'd be in the hospital reception or we'd be in one of the annexes, uh, you know, next to the wards. And um, yeah, it, it was a it was a tough time. Um, but you know, it's that's really what you know. One of his strong points is just you know making sure that he was there uh, to do that work but also making sure he was there for his family as well, you know, being there for his, for his parents and for his uncle, you know. Uh, and so that's the, that's the kind of uh, dedication that we're talking about with this, with Pritt. There is a problem with Pritt, and that is, he is altruistic. He will stop what he's doing to help somebody else's project. And that is a big problem. Pritt is driven, Pritt is focused. And he is very, very, very good at what he does. But he's the best kept secret in this country. There are people across the pond that know more about Brit Kelsey than people in this country know about Brit Kelsey. And that is, for me, frustrating. He's a simple man. Actually, he really isn't simple. Uh, his work, his ethics, his dedication, really speaks in volumes and I would like to say it's his will. His willingness to travel afar and abroad to get his idea across. I mean, just the way he does it, you know. Whatever he's doing, he, he puts all of himself in it. Um, he kind of just throws it all on the court. So, for me, it's his will that you know, embodies his dedication and, you know, what he's willing to do for what he wants in the, to describe his art or his description of the culture. There's not that many people out there that are like that. A Prince known for once he gets down to business, he, he, he handles his business and he works people very hard. That's just the way it is. It's just a work in progress. And it's tiring. But I'm gonna need a week to sleep when I get home. Yeah. There are people that take advantage of Brit, and uh, not not knowingly. I'm not. I need to retract a little bit there. Not knowingly, but Brit will give himself 100% to their project, which means he needs to then sacrifice his social life his own life to continue with his project so he's still giving his own projects 100% that is a thing but he'll also give somebody else's project 100% impossible but he does it somehow seeing all the great work he was doing he started shooting the Paul C documentary and I just thought that was super dope because uh, no one had ever really captured a Paul C like that and Prick was able being all the way 
uh, out in Birmingham in the UK and dealing with the cats from New York and being able to go back and forth. You know, he had to form some good relationships with these guys to earn their trust, you know, because everybody's, especially artists, uh, they're not gonna open up like that. If Pritt was the trunk of a tree, this tree should be 300 foot tall by now. But because these little branches that he keeps lending himself to keep spreading, it's only 50, 60 feet tall. Nowhere near where he needs to be. If you've gone through the standard route, you played the game, you ain't played the fucking game, so now ain't the time to start playing it, you know? Yeah. You've done it all yourself, you've kind of, you've done a fucking amazing job, bro, and you've been, I mean, Jesus Christ, coming here last time, not last time, the time before, fucking camera, bro, you fucking, you know, you've given blood to this thing. To do what we do, and like to put yourself in kind of harm's way a lot of the time, because it ain't easy to get out of where we're from, right? There's, there was not a lot of stuff. I didn't go to school, you know, like, you didn't go to university, like, it's, if you can get out of that, or you're lucky enough to go to school or go to university, you, you see the broader aspects of life. Where we come from, there was none of that. So through either dumb luck or just sheer hard work, you, you, you managed to break out. I kind of look back now and I'm like, Jesus Christ, how, how we transitioned from that to that. And even the fact that you're doing all this and you're doing all this and you're still there day to day, I, I don't even know how you pulled that off. Man. When we were younger, it was more a case of, you know, you stay in your lane and, um, you don't, you don't really, you weren't sort of like taught to reach for anything other than what people thought you were meant to do or meant to be. He does is always motivational for me. Um, it's always motivational to me because, I'm, you know, like I say, he has that passion and just, you can kind of see it burning, burning within him and, uh, and motivating him and carrying him forward. And, and that is, uh, that's infectious. Prince, uh, you know, ability to, uh, you know, like I said, form relationships with a lot of the legends, you know, from Jazzy J to uh, Diamond D to uh, Ultra Magnetic to Lord Finesse, Large Professor, uh, Chuck D, you know, uh, uh, DJ Chuck Chill Out, the list goes on and on. Well, I think it's been a, a, a fantastic experience. I think that uh, it, was, it has, pretty, as I said, it has been quite challenging. Even some, some small tasks that we thought would be relatively straightforward proved to be quite quite challenging. But we've managed to succeed, uh, we've managed to push forward, uh, we've met some, some amazing people, we've talked to some amazing people and uh, we've met, we, they, they've taken us in, they've taken us into their, you know, their studios, their private areas, we've met some, some families of these, of these guys that we've met and uh, you couldn't really, you couldn't really fault them, you know, I think it was, it was the one thing that you kind of feel is there's quite a lot of bond, you know, for people that maybe you have a connection with Prince or, you know, uh, but across the board with everybody. I think that um, yeah. it's a very warm and welcoming uh, thing. Um, so I'm, I want to wish you two good luck for the rest of the shoot as well. Right. Yeah, I don't think you need luck, but, you know, it's there anyway. And uh, I don't know I'm going to miss doing it, but uh, that's yeah, such a... Check out this trailer that he's been working on the last 20 years. It's amazing, incredible. Check this out. There was not influenced by the machine called the music industry. No producer was ever able to make so many different people sound good. Ever, I don't care what you say. Either you're gonna be out in the streets and be a victim, or stay in the crib and create something so that you're not a victim. We're trying to make people realize that there's other life and other world things that we can do with our time. You know, Jay saved my life. Jay was a big influence. So my thing was just want to be like the Ellis. I was a studio rat. I don't care about parameters. He didn't care about what limitations you telling us. That, that's the beauty of hip hop. They like it's just collages. This, this box reconstructed hip hop. Everybody would watch what we were buying. Yo, know, the guy played it in the store, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Give me that shit, yo. Know? Beat junkie, you know? Raps about beats, you know? Just, you already see what's going on here. Traveling in the dark, I can't see a thing. Traveling in the dark, traveling in the dark, I can't see a thing. Traveling
Not just speaking on him as a person, but um, again, it, I, I gotta come back to this word and his will to, you know, for me, uh, you know, traveling from one part of the country to another part and be willing to sleep on my living room floor, um, we got, you know, we shoot nine videos in four or five days and good quality stuff, you know. To me, his story is as compelling as what he's documenting. So this evidence that we're about to embark on and watch um, and view, his story is, is, like I said, is equally as compelling as his over 20 years of documenting and, you know, being a part of the culture and contributing to the culture, um, to me, just speaks volumes, man.